This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium small batch, roast to order, veteran owned coffee company. They are world class, hand roasted micro batch coffee, which means that they your order will not be ready, well, will not <laughs> be there until after you order it. So it's it's made to order after you order. Did I say that made, right? I believe I did. I think, made, I think the phrase <laughs> made to order encompasses all of that. Yes. Uh, coffees, coffees come in K-Cup, gift cards available, and free shipping is over. Free shipping is... Oh my goodness, Kyle. I am suffering today. Suffer. Suffer. No, keep pushing. I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping the recording. You will Free shipping over $50. <laughs> gift cards available. And coffee is available in K-Cup. Be sure to hit them up at ironbeancoffee.com to find out all, all the all the great flavors that they have to offer. Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. You got there. You got there. I struggled hard. Yeah, I do that I too. I struggled hard. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I'd settle for the old barbecue sponsor. Which, by the way, if you're if you're wanting to be a sponsor for the Sloopcast, hit us up at sloopcast at gmail dot com, or just skip the middleman and go straight to Patreon dot. <laughs> That's what TMC <laughs> yes. did. He just signed up one day. <laughs> All right, Kyle. Uh, th- th- we should. Uh, this one might take a little bit of time, so we should get started. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Well, I'm hoping this is a better episode with how I struggled in the ad read here. So, <laughs> you know, we'll you got the str- you got the struggle out of the way. It's out of the way now. Struggles out of the way <laughs> now. Now there's only good ahead. Yes. Now there's only good to get how to pay the pod the most complicated way. Uh, just just by buying a sponsorship for no good reason. I mean, that would be fun. I encourage everyone to do that. It's all upside. Hey, no, hey, no, hey Nomad, where are you at? <laughs> <laughs> Nomad's been threatening to, to, to buy ad space just to make us say stupid stuff for a long time. He hasn't actually done it yet, though. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Jared. We are here, Mach 1 of the 2023 class. That is right, Mach 1. That is what we are calling this episode. This is a Buckeye Building Blocks episode, which, if you do not know, means this is a recruiting episode. I've been uh, promising everyone a primer for the 2023 class, and what better way to do that than by doing a, a, a mock? That is right, we yeah, are so- doing a mock. So if I'm looking here, Jared, <laughs> our long M O C K. It's it's a pun. <laughs> you you have you have a lot of name you have a lot of names here, but we're going to talk about we're going to narrow this down to what about twenty ish twenty ish names here. I think I think it's a twenty five person class is what I did. Okay, yeah, yeah, I see. You're twenty five. So we're going to talk about twenty five <laughs> players here, but we'll we'll start off by the three commits for the twenty twenty three class already. Uh, first off, we have, if I scroll up here, we have Joshua Padilla. Yes. Joshua Padilla uh, from Wayne High School, which people should know. Wayne High School from a particular former Ohio State player. Uh, can you see him? Yeah. Right, kind of right there in the middle there. <laughs> I ha- Number five slash one, Braxton Miller. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh from yeah, from Wayne. Yeah, uh Joshua Padilla, offensive lineman, interior offensive lineman, sort of shoring up uh who is one of the two best, depending upon who you look at. Um definitely one of the top two offensive linemen in the state in the twenty twenty three class. Um Joshua Padilla, an excellent, excellent ball player, an excellent interior offensive lineman. Uh there's a excellent 
outside, an excellent exterior, an excellent tackle for in, from the state of Ohio, but we'll, we'll talk about him when we get into the actual mock a little bit later. Uh, by the way, Padilla technically committed to uh, Greg Strudrawa. Um, then Coach Stud was let go not long after, but Padilla has said, you know, no concerns, no worries. I'm I'm here. I'm all Buckeye. Yep. Yep. No concerns here. All right. Um, moving further south, we'll keep moving. We'll keep going south here. Next here, we have possibly the next great tight end at Ohio State. The year of the tight end. Sure. <laughs> uh, Ty Ty Lockwood from Independence High School again in in Tennessee. Um, if I click on his name real quick here, Jared. Uh, like I said, he's from Tennessee. Um, one of the best tight ends in the nation, uh, according to the 24 seven composite currently, he's the ninth best tight end. Yep. And is committed to Ohio state. Absolutely. And the third commit, uh, to, to note the three commits so far in this class will be Cedric Hawkins. Um, he is from Florida. Uh, if you missed this recruitment, I would not blame you. He committed during the Rose bowl. He just thought to himself, Hey, it's the Rose bowl. I'm going to commit now. So, Kyle, is is that a good sign? Does 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 that strike you as someone who was not necessarily looking for a ton of attention? Maybe he was trying to sneak in under the radar a tad. Um, he's a Florida kid. He's a Flo- he's a defensive back from Florida. So, if your immediate mm-hmm. reaction to that is, well, let's see if Ohio State can actually hold on to him for a year, I wouldn't blame you. <laughs> that just means you have pattern recognition. Um, so we'll see. I mean, that, that's that's it, as far as I'm going to say it. Like, we'll see. Like I said, may, maybe the fact that he that he committed during the Rose Bowl means he, that he's not looking for attention. Yep. Maybe he's deliberately looking to sort of fly under the radar a tad. Um, he is a safety, by the way. I said defensive back, but we'll probably play safety at the next level. Uh, so uh, that's I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to count him as a safety for the sake of this mock. Okay. All right. Fair enough. All right. So that is the three current Ohio state commits for the 2023 class. So let's jump into some other names on our mock draft here. So I'm going to kind of, who do we have down for the quarterback? Every, every recruiting class needs a quarterback, at least one quarterback. Who, who do we, who do we have down here for the uh, 2023 quarterback? I'm going to click on him real quick. Uh, Interesting. Interesting one here that we have. It is uh, Cameron edge. And you may yes, look yes. at Cameron Edge and be like, oh, who, who is he? He's not He's not in the top 10, 15, 10 5 quarterbacks that Ohio State should be going after. Yet. Very, very, yet. Uh, very good, very good uh, quarterback uh, out of uh, Delaware. Yeah. Ohio State, Ohio State really going up the um, um, New England states here, going up to Delaware to looking at this kid. Uh, Crystal Ball, only one. Highly... Thinks that he'll go to Maryland here. Uh, still early on, we'll, we'll exactly see what happens. Land. But 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 in our but in our mock draft here, we have Cameron Edge here. Mock mock class. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ohio State has a lot of potential. Uh, a lot of potential targets at quarterback. Um, there's not any one of them that I could definitely point at and say that one. There, there are some other quarterbacks who I think Ohio State could potentially end up with. They, they have kind of a broad net right now. Um, I did, I think Cameron Edge is probably the most likely of that crew. But um, look out for William Pop Watson, uh, Makai Singleton. Uh, seems kind of like a under the radar, low rated for right now sort of guy. Um, so, uh, by the way, he's uh, Makai Singleton. Kyle's from. Kenneshaw, Georgia. Kenneshaw, Georgia. Does that sound familiar to you? That does. I, I can't. I can't put my finger. Justin on it, Fields. But... It's a different high school. It's a different high school in Kenneshaw. But just in case but that sounds familiar, you don't, to think, you don't think Ohio State has a has a shot at the uh, number one quarterback? Who do they have as the number one quarterback right now? Manning. Kenneshaw. Excuse me, Buckeye Esquire. Kenneshaw. That would be Manning. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, he said he came out with like a top 
something recently. These are my top schools. This is these are the places where I'm visiting. I wouldn't mind getting to these other schools in Columbus. You know, Ohio State was on that list of other schools, but it was down in the second tier among a bunch of other schools. I'm not holding out any hope for it. I, I actually didn't even see. Uh, you uh, don't. You don't. You don't were. need to. You don't have to waste time following that recruitment. Okay. All, All right, right, Kyle. So, let's okay. look at some offensive linemen. Some offensive linemen. Uh, we already talked about Joshua Padilla already in the class. Um, I brought up a the other quote unquote the other offensive lineman from the state of Ohio. Uh, he is from Findlay, Ohio. His name is Luke Montgomery. Uh, top one hundred player in the country. Uh, marked as the second best player from the state of Ohio. Top. 10 just outside the top five uh number six or seven depending upon what da, 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 you're looking at but yeah uh, an excellent offensive tackle feels like the exact sort of guy that ohio state needs ohio state <laughs> buckeye esquire asked well who's the number one guy in ohio well thank you for that transition buckeye esquire uh, as, as, a yeah, you helped me out into the exact next point I was attempting to make, um, Ohio state's currently struggling in its own state. Struggling bad. Brennan Vernon, defensive lineman, excellent player committed to Notre Dame. If we look down through the list of the top 15 players, not a single one's committed to Ohio state yet in the state of Ohio. Excuse me, that's wrong. Joshua Padilla is outside of Joshua Padilla, though. Not, not, not a one. Mm, yeah, so, uh, yeah. Anthony Brown's committed to to Minnesota. I already mentioned Brennan Vernon's Notre Dame. Uh, you have Trevor Carter and AJ uh, Sally both committed to Cincinnati. Um, it's to be, and, and quite to frankly, they don't necessarily feel super in on a bunch of players from Ohio. Notre Dame and Cincinnati are really going to be challenging Ohio State for the in-state talent. Yeah, to be Luke fair, Montgomery to the... feels like a guy they have to hit on. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. I I think so as well. But to be fair, the twenty twenty three class has been looking early on looks is looking like a pretty weak class compared to previous years too. Currently you only have two players in the top hundred and then three in the top 200 here. Yeah. Overall. Um, and that's, that's probably somewhat fair. I'll say this though. The Ohio kids are always late rising in yes. the recruiting rankings because they don't have seven on seven spring ball and they don't have as many camps. The Ohio kids are always playing catch up in the recruiting rankings. So considering we're, you know, a year out essentially from the first national signing day for this class, mm -hmm. it's not the, the Ohio kids are just going to still be behind. Well, that's, when especially, that's just how it goes. Especially if you look at the 2022 class, uh, you have five players in the top hundred, really five in the top 61. Okay, but Kyle... I, and, and then you have uh, then you have eight in the top 155. Kyle, when I first started paying attention to, and I forget his name, help me out here, the, the quarterback who ended up committing to Penn State. Uh, that would be uh, Drew. That would be Drew Aller. Yeah, Drew Aller. Uh, all Air. I believe it's All Air. Um, he was like in the 300s when I first started putting him in our spreadsheet. Where did he finish? 27. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like the Ohio kids are just late to rise in the recruiting rankings. It's 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 a thing we see every year. So you you can't necessarily compare this the the rankings right now compared to where the mm -hmm. rankings finished in the previous class. It's it's not a fair assessment. Yeah. No. But 100 percent yes. But currently it looks like it's a weaker class. But we'll see as the as the year goes on though. Okay, Kyle. Uh, anyway, uh, Luke, we, Luke Munger. We, we need to move a little bit faster, buddy. We've barely touched any of the names. I I know. So, yep, that's exactly where I was going to get to. So, Luke M Montgomery, one of the uh, tackles. Another name here uh, is is um, Austin uh, who, 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 Saraville, uh, also a kid from Ohio here. I'm going to go with Sarah Veed. It's, it's fine. I don't know, though. Yeah, another kid from Ohio. Uh, he's an interior, another interior offensive lineman. Uh, he is from Lakota East. Uh, 
then we're going to jump out of the state of Ohio, go over to New Jersey. Uh, his name is Chase. I, I also Bisantis? don't know how to pronounce this one. Basantis? 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 Um, he is an offensive tackle out of Don Bosco Prep, a, a very, uh, it's a scholarship factory in New Jersey, is what that is. Um, he stands at 6'5, 290. Um, and then to finish out, I think there's a, I, I like those four names. If we, if we include Padilla, uh, and then the other names I gave you, I really like those names. I really feel like that's a very realistic, very good offensive line class for the Buckeyes. Uh, I get down to that fifth guy and I do think that they're going to get a fifth guy at the offensive line, mostly because of how disappointing the 2022 class finished for the offensive line. Um, so I do think they're going to try and get a fifth guy. I think the fifth guy could be one of a bunch of different people. Um, I ended up going with Peyton Kirkland. Um, he is from Orlando, Florida. Uh, I, I had to pick one. It, it could have been a few different people. I feel really good about the first four. Um, I feel like that's a very realistic, um, optimistically realistic group of names, could have gone with a bunch of guys for that fifth place. Um, so, but I went with Peyton yeah. Kirkland. All right, let's go to let's go to another position here. The running back. We're gonna we're gonna stick we're gonna stick with Florida, and we're gonna go with a with a um, really talented running back. Uh, actually, the best running back in this class currently, uh, Richard Young. Richard yeah. Young from uh, the High Acres, Florida. Uh, very recruited by heavily with Alabama and Clemson right now. So. Tell us a little bit about why he's in our um, in our mock. First, I'd like to say that I think Ohio State wants two running backs in this class. I think they're looking at a potential um, high transfer rate out of their current class. So I think that they would love to get some depth here. But I also think that they're probably a little short on scholarships and they're not going to go fishing for that second mm -hmm. scholarship, that second running back. So I, I only have them finishing with one running back, even though I, I say that with the knowledge of knowing that they want to, but Richard yeah. young is amazing. He's absolutely amazing. Uh, I give Ohio state a very slight edge over Alabama right now. Um, okay. And it's Alabama and it's a year out so the, 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 the edge is slight and, and it can change at a moment. Um, I, I think that there's a lot of good running backs in this class. I just, this is the only running back. I think I'm really willing to give Ohio state an edge with right now. Um, some other names to keep an eye on. I would say, especially one other name to keep an eye on uh, justice Hayes. Um, I, I think would be another, uh, a great running back. I just, I don't feel like Ohio State leads there right now. Yeah. They're they're probably in the top three, but not in the top one. Gotcha. All right, let's move let's move to the uh wide receiver group here. Uh, one person we've already mentioned his name already, Anthony Brown. We have it we have in the uh, mock class here uh, from Springfield, Ohio. Squire, are you screwing with me or is that true? Uh, he's uh, currently currently committed to Minnesota. Back before, uh, really early on in the uh, se when the season started last year, lots changed since then. Uh, also, also in our class here, we have uh, Brandon Innes from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, currently, the best wide receiver in in this class, and and then the last one also from uh, Florida from IMG Academy, uh, Cornell Tate, uh, the number three wide receiver in this class and to be noted with Carnell Tate, uh, Steve Wiltfong has his yeah. vote in for Ohio state. Yeah. Um, Tate says Florida he's IMG, but he's Chicago. Just, just so we're clear, like he's from Chicago. He went down to play football at IMG. Mm -hmm. uh, Gangland says certified stud. Absolutely. Um, Brandon Ennis, another certified stud, uh, he was a part of the mass decommitment train that happened at Oklahoma when their coaching staff fell apart. Ohio state was probably second or third 
in his recruitment at that time. Oklahoma's out. Oklahoma's gone. Oklahoma's not a part of the conversation anymore. You know, enters Ohio State at this point. So yep. Brennan Ennis back in play. He's from American Heritage High School in Florida. And as as uh, Kyle said, I included Anthony Brown in this class, Ohio kid from Springfield, currently committed to Minnesota. But if uh, if daddy comes calling. Look out. <laughs> yes. All right. That's uh, oh, one, one more, more offensive yeah. player. Then let's do it. One break. more. Yep. <laughs> Well, we got to finish out the offense. Yes. Going to stick with the state of Ohio here. So really, really going out here. But uh, Tanner Lemaster from Washington Courthouse, Ohio. Uh, He's he's a he's a kid. um, uh, According to the 24-7 composite, the 25th best tight end and the eighth best in the state of Ohio. Uh, stands at six six two thirty five. That that's a tied in right there. <laughs> that might be an offensive tackle. Um, and just so we're clear, that's a possibility. Like he he might be he might be he's sort of coming in as a bit of a tweener. Um, I'm bringing him in as a tight end. They want two tight ends in this class. So you know you pair him with Ty Lockwood, who we already talked about. Two tight ends. Um. Tanner Lamaster could be an offensive tackle if need be. Yeah, exactly, Gangland. I uh, gotta let Coach Mick work with him because he's a, he's a giant tight end or he's a small offensive tackle <laughs> at at two thirty five. The six six ain't, ain't no one small at at, at six six. But as far as you know, weight goes, he would definitely need to you know add some muscle to that frame. Oh, something interesting too. That is also true, Gangland. He says, or we could just have a tank blocking at tight end. Ohio State's done it in the past, and they'll do it in the future. Something interesting that just just happened here with Tanner. Uh, He he just actually just got a a visit from uh, Coach Wilson today. Yes, yes, he did. It's almost like I know what I'm doing, Kyle. And that's (laughs) our today. This probably won't be released for a couple days. But that's that happened for our today. All right, I think this is a good spot. Um, that's all the offensive um, players, and we'll we'll talk about the defensive players after Jared's talk about our sponsor, the Iron Bean Coffee Company. By the way, uh, before I do that, Beck- Buckeye Esquire says I support tank tight ends. Buckeye Esquire, we all know we don't throw to the tight ends. Why not? <laughs> Why we, not? We throw, get it, to some them, we throw it to tanks. them. We th- throw it to them the first first or second game of the year they get two touchdowns and then you know kyle let's talk about some coffee um the raging tiger still sold out guys you got to get on these things while you can uh the the whole shebang kyle they're down to six in stock it's still just whole bean they're down to six in stock you got to jump on these things while you can i'm just i'm warning you guys this is a small company micro roasting they a lot of their coffees are single origin which means they get all the beans from a single farm you you think other people are having supply chain issues my goodness imagine if all of your beans had to come from one farm um let's see mom's carrot cake still sold out we talked about that last time um scrolling down through the coffees the 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 white chocolate peppermint still in stock get it while you can um, but as far as, as, as far as any of that stuff goes, they, they look to be doing pretty good on their stock right now. They, they have a sale going drink from the skull of your enemy, the cast iron, uh, a pair of, uh, coffees that are among my favorites currently on sale, $2 off the skull from your enemy is a dark roast coffee. Uh, it's a dark roast coffee. Um, it's an intense dark roasted Sumatra, um, it's a traditional Indonesian coffee, uh, edgier and sm- and smokier, uh, has a nice earthy factor. Um, this uh, offering a strong prime example of a cl- classic Indonesian Sumatra, uh, thick, creamy, chocolatey. You also find notes of strong cedar, sweet tobacco, wine and spice. Tell me that doesn't sound amazing. 
It's one of my favorites for a reason. So you can pick up your very own bag of the drink from the Skull of Your Enemy, currently on sale, $2 off, over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. Kyle, let's do the defense now. All right, we got we got a ton here. We got a we got a lot here on the defense. So let's start. I'm going to mix it up on you, Jared. We're going to go to the defensive backs first. Why? <clears> why <throat> like, put them in order, Kyle. No, I'm just kidding. That's oh, fine. No, but I'm going to mix them up here. We already talked about uh, Cedric Hawkins currently committed to Ohio State. Uh, let's talk about the other ones, starting with Elliot Washington from Venice, Florida, uh, a top 200. A uh, prospect and is recruited heavily from Alabama, Georgia, Penn State, all of, all of the known names here. Yeah, the, sort of the the common names that if you go, if you go and you look at who Ohio State is competing against, it's a lot of the same names. It's Notre Dame, it's Alabama, it's Georgia, it's Clemson. Although I I, I have to wonder how how if they're if the Clemson stuff's going to hold up. That sort of feels like a a program in a bit of disarray right now. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of the same people that Ohio state's recruiting against all the time. There's no, Oh yeah. Clemson. Yeah. He says there, uh, gangland says there's no way they have like two years left. Well, you only need one year left to, to steal a recruiter two during this recruiting cycle gangland. Um, yep. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, Elliot Washington, excellent, uh, safety, as Kyle pointed out, he's from Venice, Florida, uh, inside the top 200. Um, again, you're going up. I, I think he's better. If, if we look here, uh, one night, uh, 24 sports composite, 194 national 18 safety in the country, 35th best player in Florida. He's better than that. I'm telling you right now, he's better than that. Just take a look at his offers. Look at everyone who's pursuing him. Mm -hmm. Like the yeah. entire Big Ten's pursuing him. Alabama's pursuing him. Georgia's pursuing him. Tell me he's the 18th best safety in the country with an offer list with that amount of attention. Tell me he's actually the 18th safety in the country. I dare you. Yeah. Same thing with this next kid here. 21st best uh, cornerback uh, kid out of uh, Roswell, Georgia. Um, talking about Ethan Nation. Another kid. Here's another kid recruited by... Bama, Arkansas, Auburn, lots and lots of others here, too. Yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah. Uh, Kyle's moving on to the corners now. Those The first two guys were safeties, moved on to the corners now. Um, yeah, Kyle nails this. Um, 173rd in the country per the composite, outside the top 20 corners. But look, but look at that offer list. Look at the, look at the people who are pursuing him closely. Um, I, I think Ethan Nation is a... <laughs> Uh, I think a likely, somewhat likely, considering how far out we are, considering he's in Georgia, uh, a somewhat likely candidate for Ohio State here. Yeah, and it's a great name. Ethan yeah, Nation. It it's borderline, it's borderline superhero name. Borderline. Right, moving on to uh, some, other, some other players that people may recognize. Uh, A.J. Harris. Uh, number number three corner for this for this class uh, kid out of Alabama. Man, if Ohio State could take a kid from Alabama. <laughs> well, let, let's let's pause on the Alabama. Let's pause on the Alabama. Um, grew up in Los Angeles. Grew up in Germany. Army kid. This is an army kid. He's he's been all over the place. So you know you see oh no, Alabama. Can Ohio State steal a defensive back out? He's not an Alabama kid. Like, let's let's just say that right away. He, he, he's not rooted in Alabama. That's where he is right now. He's not rooted in Alabama. Um, but, but Jared. No, that, that's it. That that's it. He's not rooted in Alabama. Well, the, now, the if there's a but, of, um... if there is a but, um, it's that he is very very close with Coach Combs. Yes. That yep. that's a big but. Um, Ohio State letting go of Coach Combs has set Ohio State back in this recruitment. It has not, I, but I still have him in the mock. So it's a it's a step back. It's not a it doesn't not close the book. We just went back a couple chapters. Um, he went on Twitter and said that Cincinnati's now one of his top schools. He loves Coach Combs. 
I, yep. I do not expect him to follow through on that. Um, could he still end up at Georgia? Yeah. But Georgia had their own defensive upheavals on the coaching staff. Um, yes. He was interested in LSU. He's no longer interested in LSU. Raymond left. So what is he doing? He's now looking at Florida. He liked Corey Raymond. He, Corey Raymond, the, the cornerback coach who was at LSU for a very long time. If you don't know who Corey Raymond is, he goes to Corey Raymond goes to Florida. Now AJ Harris is looking at Florida. So AJ Harris is sort of a lot of the schools he was looking at had coach shifting. So he's added Cincinnati and Florida to the list of Ohio state, Bama and Georgia. So Mm -hmm. the, the list has gotten a little bit bigger. Ohio state was, I would say in the lead going into this, you know, coaching upheaval, but I don't know if they're currently in the lead, but I do think they can get back there. Yep. And I think uh, they will on get here. back there. Yeah. Moving on here. Um, last kid uh, from the defensive backs is Sheriff Denson. So that, that's a, that's a name too. Sheriff Denson. Uh, yeah. Kid out of Jacksonville, Florida, uh, top hundred or top 200, excuse me, 200 kid, uh, 18th best corner. Definitely seems like a Florida kid here. Uh, that he but, is. Bartram Trail. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Gangland says Sheriff and the Silver Bullets. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Y'all All dropping right. dimes right. over there. Gangland also said no one should be interested in LSU or Florida. I would never, ever, 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 ever blame a kid for committing to Corey Raymond. He's one of the best in the game. Plain and simple, Corey Raymond's one of the best yep. in the game. He's one of the best cornerbacks. So cornerback coaches to ever coach cornerbacks. He's excellent. Yeah. I would fault no kid for committing to Corey Raymond. Mm-hmm. All right. Moving on to linebackers, Jared. Uh, we got three, we got three names here. We have a uh, Malik Hartford from Westchester, Ohio. Uh, Troy, Troy Bolos from uh, Tampa, Florida, as well as uh, Jaden Osbury from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Yeah, uh, he's from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, which, of course, like the first thing you think of when you hear that. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going to go for a second. What's the first thing you think of when you hear that? You think of LSU, LSU here, but everybody's in play here from, from what I'm from what I'm seeing here, though. Uh, everyone's in play, but I think the only people who are. Uh, really playing our, our Ohio state and Bama right now. Um, mm-hmm. Troy Bowles is a guy who I've had on, on the other hand, Troy Bowles is a guy who I've had sort of earmarked uh, to Ohio state for a while now. Um, like I asked, are you dropping Garth Brooks references in the chat, tra- in the chat right now? <laughs> that seriously threw me. Um, yeah, so has, uh, <laughs> so has uh, Steve Wiltfong who's um, had his crystal ball way back in uh in August of last year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Troy Bowles, like I said, a guy who I've had sort of earmarked to Ohio state for a long time. Uh, he's from mm-hmm. uh, Jesuit out of Tampa, Florida and uh, Malik Hartford. Um, another Ohio kid. Uh, he's from Lakota West, not Lakota East uh, <laughs> like our interior offensive lineman from before, but Lakota West. Um uh, I, I think Bowles and Hartford are two guys who <laughs> gangland says West is better. Listen, I'm not getting into whatever that is. I, I will say West has produced more um, Ohio state level talent in recent years than Lakota East. Uh, so that's, that's kind of undisputable, but uh yeah. Yeah, Hartford and Bowles, two linebackers who I think Ohio State has a really, really, really good shot at. Um, Osbury, a little bit more up in the air, would be a huge get if you can get him, but you have to steal a, a kid from Bama, or excuse me, well, steal steal a kid from Louisiana from Bama. And, you know, that deep in the South, to win a recruiting battle over Alabama is going to be tough. I do, rec- I do include him in the recruiting, um, in in the in the recruiting class here in our mock class here. Um, I think Ohio State has a good chance. It's very very early in the cycle. We'll see. 
Mm-hmm. All right, moving on to the defensive line, Jared. Uh, I'm going to read uh, oh, a couple sorry, of Sorry, Kyle, here. before we get away, Malik, uh, Malik Hartford uh, could be a safety. He's sort of a tweener right now. Just, just throwing that out there. He, he's a bit of a tweener. I think he's a linebacker at the next level. Could be a safety. All right. Uh, first name here for the defensive line, we have Keith Sampson from New Bern, North Carolina. We're going way out to the east here. Uh, not the first time that Ohio State has gone after a kid out of North Carolina here. Uh, he's a just outside the top 200 here, 30th best defensive lineman for this class. Uh, another is... Amari Washington from Arizona, yeah. uh, top 150 kid, 20th uh, defensive lineman for this class. Already has a crystal ball for Ohio State. Uh, looks like that's uh, Bill uh, Kerlick uh, that has his, um, but his crystal ball in there too. Yeah, and those uh, are the two defensive tackles I have for Ohio State right now. Um, yep. I, I Part of me does think that they would like to, to maybe have three defensive tackles. I'm just giving them two in this mock for now. Uh, I think that they have some other really good options. I think Larry Johnson's doing work so far. Um, Ohio, I, I think like defensive tackles and defensive ends, if, if I go through like my cheat sheet here or two of the deepest position groups I have in the cheat sheet, um, there's a lot of good names to keep an eye out here. Um mm-hmm. You know, I think Caden McDonald, John Walker are two additional names to look out for among a bunch of others. Um, but yeah, I think those are the two defensive tackles I'm give I'm putting in this class for now. Okay. All right. And the other names here we have uh, uh, Tusley. Is that how you would say Tusley? Um, he's he's Hawaiian. And you, you and I definitely struggle with those Pacific Island names. <laughs> um, uh, Tassili Akana. All right. I'm a, we'll, I'm a throw, we'll go with I'm that a, one. <laughs> I'm going to throw that in the chat. Let's, let's see if uh, let's see if any of our uh, live folks. Right. He's, he's, he's the 50th. He's the he's 50th nationally, fifth best edge um, rusher in this class here. Uh, yeah, definitely a kid that. A lot of people are going to want to go after another name, AJ Hoffler, a uh, kid out of Atlanta, Georgia, just outside the top 250 here. And then the last one here is Gabriel Harris uh, from Georgia, who's just outside the 109th best edge rusher for this class. Yeah, it's a very Georgia and Florida heavy mock, which should be a surprise to no one who follows recruiting. Um, <clears throat> Gayland asks, is this the class with the brother of the Clemson quarterback? Yeah, I, I don't have him in this class, in this mock. But I think he's a very real possibility. Again, uh, Co- Coach Johnson's doing work here. There's a ton of really high probability prospects who I did not include in this class. Uh, Mateo Uyunglele is... I'll, I'll, I beat you to it, Zach. I beat you to it. I said it. Um, I think David Hicks, Derek LeBlanc. Um, there's a lot of. <laughs> there's a lot of, I think, really good defensive linemen with a decent probability of being in this class who I didn't include in this class. Um, yeah. they, they have a they have really deep prospects along the defensive <laughs> yeah. gangland celebrating in the chat right now because uh the ooey pooey game is going on and uh Aaron's finally hit a shot <laughs> all right, Jared, yeah, really um, really know, deep prospects in the defensive line class right now yeah all right i know we're, we're coming up on the 40 minute mark here but that's our that's our 25 name that's our 25 name list for our mock one of the 2023 class yeah for sure. Um, I, again, there's some really good names out there who I did not include on the list. I'm just going to maybe do some quick name checks. Um, Tamir Robinson at linebacker, uh, I think is a decent possibility. Josiah Trotter, um, who is a, a linebacker, real decent possibility. 
Uh, Caden Proctor, I know, is an offensive tackle that I think a lot of people have been talking about. I think he's a, an okay possibility. Um, A.J. Sally, a, an Ohio kid, currently committed to Cincinnati, I think, again, could potentially be a, a down-the-road possibility. So many quarterbacks. Um, so many quarterbacks. Um, Ruben Owens is a running back. Again, real high probability there. Uh, just didn't have room for them in the class. Um, yeah, I mean, again, there's a there's a ton of great names out there with high probability and high potential. Um, but these are the 25 I went with. Yep. Yeah. We, we talked about that in the, um, the first part, uh, Buckeyes, Zach. Uh, yeah. It's how state not, not looking too, too and, good and, for their in-state recruits. Well, and once again, and this has been, I don't, I don't know. If, I don't know if recurring is the, is the right thing to say. Cause they, Ohio State once again has lost out on the best player in the state of Ohio. It's a thing that's yeah. happening. It's it's still, as we like to say here on the Swoopcast, it's still very early in the recruiting class. Yeah, but I, um, I, 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 don't, I don't think I don't Brennan feel good. I don't. I don't feel. I don't think good Brennan about, Vernon's flipping though. I think Brennan Vernon's at yeah. Notre Dame. Yeah, that's not. I, I, I don't think that's flipping. Say, I don't. The only way I Ohio State flipping. gets. The only way Ohio State gets the top player in the state of Ohio this year is if Luke Montgomery passes Brendan Vernon and ends up committing to Ohio State. And by the way, they're very closely scored. So it's possible. Ohio yeah. State could still, if they if Luke Montgomery commits and then passes Vernon in the recruiting rankings, then Ohio State could still technically get the top player in the state of Ohio. Yep. These are possibilities. All right, Jared. All right, that is our class here. Any any last comments? Uh so so many, but none we have none that we have time for. All right. All right. Uh yeah, that's it. That's our class. Um Kyle, we have some Ask Sloopcast questions. Do you want to knock out right. a quick one or two? All right, very quick here. Uh <laughs> Nomad. Will they ever not have a beer during the season moving forward? not have a beer uh i don't i don't know I, I i certainly will i will have many beers beard 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 very very important with the d at the end there jared <laughs> i'll also have one of those during the season yeah. <laughs> i don't know I, I like i like beard uh day i don't know i, I, do too. I, I hope to see it again I like beer uh, today. Uh, with so much discussion on big recruit misses, the offensive line, he points out, is there too much focus on star chasing and not enough on player development? Let me ask you a question, Kyle. Mm -hmm. uh, over the past 10, 12, so years, mm -hmm. um, who's won the, na the most national titles? Alabama. Who is constantly, constantly having the best, if not in the top one or two, maybe three recruiting classes in the entire country? Well, that'd be Alabama. This is not a coincidence. Okay. <laughs> um, last question here. Are there any existing or inbound linebackers that would allow Ohio State to run a 3-4 style defense to make up schemes? You know, with the way Oklahoma State in the past and Ohio State might do in the future, um, they have utilized what is called a Leo, which is a defensive end who's kind of a linebacker, kind of a defensive end. Um, it, it can sort of mirror a three four if you if you squint in the in the correct way. So, yeah, <laughs> we have Court Williams. <laughs> we have court williams we have the hulk yeah um so yeah i think it's it's certainly possible mm -hmm. all right no Florida matter Buck, you, you, you missed the mock class yeah. buddy this this is this episode was practically made for you we talked about so many yeah. kids from the state right, of florida last question from nomad here uh will there be uh tailgate or a bar meetup for the spring game 
Hells yeah. But it'll be Patreon only, so I'm not going to reveal any details here. <laughs> uh, right, I, Florida Buck right, says, how is that question. my job? I should quit my job. <laughs> All right, last question we have here is from Buckeye Esquire. Over under 45 extra points kicked by Noah Ruggles in 2022, which Noah Ruggles has announced that he'll be back to yeah, play for the um, Buckeyes next year. 45 touchdowns feels totally achievable, right? Yeah, it does. Yes, I'm going to go over. I'll go over. I'll hit that over button. Yeah, that feels totally achievable. All right. All right, that's it, Jared. That's what we have for today's episode. Hire. Hire him. We can't afford to pay our, each other. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> All right. Um, Kyle, uh, no, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 everyone join the Discord and, and help us out on Patreon. There, done. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, real quick here, just one word or one quick sentence about the following here, Jared. All right. Alfred, Alfred promoted to the run game coordinator. The running game coordinator. Yeah, that's... Yay, it's, it's an excuse to pay him more money, which he deserves. All right, Al Washington heading on over to Notre Dame. Good for him. Makes perfect sense. Felt like uh, it was Car either going to be Carrie Notre Com Dame or it was going to be Cincinnati. Mentioned it already. Kerry Combs heading to Cincinnati. I was expecting him to go to the NFL. I'm a little bit surprised. Uh, that being said, mm -hmm. if he was going to take a college job, it was going to be Cincinnati. Um, right. But and I expected him to go back to the NFL. Most important one here. Tathan Martell retires from football to focus on business ventures. Uh, I'm I'm going to guess it's either going to be a scam. His, his business venture is either going to be a scam cryptocurrency or a energy drink. Those, those are the two things that ex uh, washout athletes like to do. Energy drinks, All right. energy drinks, and and crypto, uh, completely useless cryptocurrency. All right, that's it, Jared. Go ahead and end us off here. All right, tonight's episode will be uh, play. They're playing us out tonight. Will be the Cordial Sins. The Cordial Sins have an album release party at the Roomba Cafe this Friday. This Friday. That's the I believe we call that the Glen Echo area of Columbus. Um. That is, I believe is what we call that, but it's uh, it's the Roomba Cafe, 2507 Summit Street, Columbus, Ohio, 43202. I love Roomba. It's probably my favorite small venue in Columbus. So go, go check out The Cordial Sins this Friday, the 21st. Is that this Friday? It is, sure is. This Friday, the 21st, for an album release party. So uh, with all of that being said, uh, the cordial sins will be doing today's ending music if that wasn't obvious uh with all that being said i'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer listen to local music and of course support your local podcasters once again this is the cordial sins mm -hmm.